I'm going to talk about manual. Um, I shoot all manual, all the time, no exceptions, right? Except for when I do like remote cameras, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, which is really awesome. It's kind of my geeky thing I love to do. But um, if the camera is on me, it's never anything but manual, right? How about you guys? Everybody? Nope. What's up? I, aperture? Yeah, I'm using Aperture right now. I tried to switch to manual recently and struggled with it quite a bit and may try to do that in the off season. I, I'm not really sure about it. I, I feel I, you're going to probably disagree with me and convince me otherwise. 100%, I, yes. I felt like I could do the same things with exposure compensation in, in Aperture Priority that I could do in manual. Um, and I felt like I was spending way too much time thinking about what needed to be happening with my fingers when I was in manual yeah. rather than taking the shots that I needed to be Not taking. Not after today you won't. I can guarantee it. <laughs> okay, that's All what right? the last person told me too. Uh, I, got, I, got, I, I literally teach moms with cameras who don't even know what shutter and, and aperture means. I teach them how to shoot manual with their cameras and it changes everything, right? So you should be alright. Um, <clears throat> the reason I don't want anything, I don't want that camera making any decisions for me whatsoever, right? Like none. Like cameras are not smart. Everybody thinks they are, but they're not. They're actually programmed for the status quo, for the average image, right? I'm trying to do above average things with a, with a camera, so I don't want the camera thinking for me at all, right? Not even auto white balance. Mainly because I'm, I used to be JPEG, but um, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we're not gonna go there. I'm not gonna open that can of worms up again. The reason, the reason why Aperture, um, Priority doesn't make any sense to me. And I understand what you're meaning by exposure compensation. Totally get it. Because I know Greg Gibson, the guy I talked about yesterday, <clears throat> he shoots aperture priority. I know a ton of people that shoot aperture priority. And I'm always trying to be the fastest I can be, right? And so he, um, at one point he was like, uh, he was like uh, uh, we, we had this, th this debate. And he finally told me, he goes, well, I'm, I'm controlling it manually, right? With exposure compensation. And he says, I'm actually doing it faster than you, Tyler, because I only have to turn three clicks each way as opposed to me, you know, running my dial more, right? So he can get there faster. And I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. But then I realized that you only have three clicks each way, right? Or am I three mistaken? Full three full stops. That's all you have. Yeah. I need more sometimes. So aperture priority, because I'm shooting for these highlights and these crazy lighting situations. So aperture priority would slow me down in that situation, you know, right? And so on this next example, we're going to talk about it, okay? And I'm going to tell you how to do it. Okay, so manual always for me. So this is kind of fun, okay? This is a new thing I've done. I'm going to move out of your way, David, because you can understand this, right? You look like a deer in headlights right now. So in the end, if you disagree with me, it's completely fine, right? <laughs> but I shouldn't say guarantee. I shouldn't guarantee anything. But um, so this is, a, this is an example I want to show you of, of how I shoot manual and why it works. So the way I shoot manual is I'm going to go through it really quickly, OK? But I think it's going to make sense. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. Out of what are the three things that affect exposure, basically? What are the three things that go into making a photo? Yes. ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, right? Okay. Which one of those three is the hardest one to change? Takes the most amount of button pushing to change. ISO. ISO, ISO right? Okay. So you don't want to be changing ISO a lot because it slows you down, right? right? Especially on, on these cameras, those, I mean, I think all like new cameras have that. But I mean, you know, on this, this is shutter, this is aperture, right? I can change it like that so quickly, but on, I got to do two buttons here, and you know, all that kind of stuff, right? <clears throat> so what I do is I, is, I, is, I, is I decide my ISO first, and I set it and forget it. You know, like those infomercials, like when they're cooking chicken? Set it and forget it, right? And I, uh, to a point, obviously. I set my ISO for the scene, okay? Um, whatever that's going to be. I put my ISO as high as I possibly can all the time. Because the reason I bought the 5D Mark III is because I, I have motion blur more than autofocus issues, I have motion blur issues in my images. I cannot handhold a digital camera like I used to a film camera. I could handhold a film camera at tenth of a second, fifteenth of a second, easy. 
And now it's like I get motion blur at 250th of a second sometimes, which is ridiculous. It drives me nuts. So I bought this, A, for the ISO performance, because it has great high ISO, but I also bought it because it's going to allow me to get my shutter speed higher. Right? Okay? So I set ISO usually like for as high as I can get it and feel comfortable with it. Then I, um, th then I set the aperture. Okay? And the reason, this is one reason I don't like aperture priority, because aperture priority is then, in theory, choosing my shutter speed for me. And so that, I don't want that to go too low, and then I end up getting motion blur, right? But I set my aperture next, and because usually, think about how many things you want. Like ISO, you only have a certain amount that you can actually use, right? 400 or 200 up to like 3,200 maybe, right? Aperture, you only have like a few apertures that you can really use, right? We don't want to run around shooting at 5.6 or F8 all the time because we have too much depth of field, and it looks like an iPhone picture, right? And so, you know, I'm usually around like F2 to like F4 max. That's not very many options, right? But shutter speed, I have tons of options, don't I? I have 30 seconds all the way up to 8,000th of a second, right? So all I'm doing is I'm setting my ISO and I'm setting my aperture and I'm just adjusting my shutter speed all day long to match the lighting conditions that are there. Does that make sense? So all I have to worry about is that dial, right? Yeah. Okay. And so what I'm doing now is, is I literally have broken this down in my head to on Canon, left is light, right is dark. Nikon, right is light, left is dark. Okay, that's it. Like that's how stupid I am to myself. And all I do is I see light and I go, oh, that's light, go to the right. That's dark, go to the left. And then I look at the back of the camera and I make sure I'm in the right place and I keep going. So left is light, right is dark, left is light, right is dark, right? And you, but you always have to remember where you're at on the numbers, of course. You don't be like, left is dark, you just, I gotta get more, you know, or left is light, I gotta get more light in, and then you're like, oh, I'm one second exposure. That's not gonna work, right? You gotta pay attention to where your numbers are, but when, you're, when you've already set yourself up for the scene and you're in those right places, then that's all you're doing. You're all, all you're thinking to yourself is you're just watching the light and you're just adjusting for it as it happens, right? And I'm, the reason I waited today to tell you guys all this stuff is when you see the video, I want you to watch how I do all that kind of stuff. And you'll see and you'll hear me running the, running the dials. Okay? Right? Yes. And they're usually using a spot metering? No. Evaluative. Okay. Like the one with the, you know, the, mm -hmm. yeah. I think spot, I think spot is too, it's too, it's too precise, right? And so what, mm -hmm. what can happen is, is that, is that you can expose for something, and then if you're just off a little bit, it, it can really change what's going on, you know? Right. Are you watching the camera meter at the bottom of the screen? Oh, or? God, yeah, constantly. Wait, yeah, you said yes? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. So what I do is I, is I, is I, I, set, what I, I set where I want, the, I, I want the effect of the image to be, meaning the depth of field. You know, depth of field, for people out there that might be new at this and don't know, depth of field is how much is in focus, right, from here to there, you know? Um, like on this picture, they're in focus, but the stuff right, but the seat right behind them is out of focus. If you use a higher aperture, then more things would be in focus, right? So I want a certain effect with my depth of field, so I set that first. Because what's going to, and then, and then I'm going to control my, my shutter, right? Because I want to make sure that that hits that where I want it, right? Okay. So I set that first, and then I adjust my shutter speed to the light that's there. And the reason I want to be in, in control of shutter speed is because what's going to hurt your picture more? Depth of field or motion blur? Motion blur. Every single time. It's going to kill it. I cannot even hardly decipher between like 2.8 and F4 on a, on, a, on a thing. I'm like, well, if you look at the distance between here to there, it's about, you know, I'm not that scientific, right? But motion blur, I'm like, yep, that was motion blur. I just got screwed, you know? So, and, and, and you're going to see this in this next, in this next thing. So I'm going, to talk, I'm going to go through this, right? So here's a wedding I shot where... They were, and this is all shot on JPEGs, had to be on top of things. They were uh, leaving their, their ceremony and coming down the aisle, right? And so here they are. So this is at 729, 40 p.m. in 40 seconds. ISO 1600, F2.2 at 80th of a second. 80th of a second was dangerous. I don't know why I was there, to be quite frank with you. Um, but so I shot a picture, and it's really not great. But I'm backpedaling with them, right? So then, 41, see how dang, I went to 60th. You see what happened? I changed it to 60th in less than a second. I don't know why. 
ridiculous. And I blew the, I, I blew the picture, right? See how blurry it is, right? So then I'm, I'm, I'm still backpedaling with them, and I'm still stuck at my same ISO and my same aperture. And then I went back up to 80th, so I must have bumped it, because that's ridiculous. Why, why would I do that? Still blew the picture. See the motion blur, right? And, I'm not, and probably at this point, I'm like freaking out, you know? I'm like, God, I'm missing it. I'm missing it. I'm missing it. Um, but I just kept shooting, and I kept just adjusting, and I'm hoping that I'm going to get lucky. And then... Right here, 1600, f2.2. Oh, I got back up to 160th, so I got, I got smart, right? I'm like, you idiot. And I fixed myself, right? I, I saved myself. And that's only been nine seconds, right? Okay? So I got it back up to 160th, and they are looking awesome. Like, this is a fantastic photo. I finally got one sharp, and look at their faces, right? It's horrible. And then, and then they just keep walking. Okay, that one's okay. 52. Now I got myself up to 250th, right? So I caught my mistake, didn't I? And what happened was, is I was, I was backpedaling with them, backpedaling, and I must have just done this real quick. And I'm like, oh, God, and then I fixed it, right? See, I went, I went to the, I, went, I just did, I didn't even think about that. It was too blurry. I need a higher shutter speed to the right. See that? To the left, to the right, right? To the left. Anyway, um, okay, so, so I hit the 250th, right? Well, then something amazing happened. Really? What are you laughing at? My, my light acquisition deficiency? <laughs> is that what you're laughing at? Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's horrible, isn't it? And I'm like, light, light, light. They went into that light, people. And they, that beam of light, and I'm just like, bah! I was like freaking out, right? So look what I did. I went up to 640th, and then I went up to 4.5, which completely defeats what I just told you to do, doesn't it? I should have just been doing this. As soon as that light hit, I should have just went like this and just ran that dial up, you know? Because I don't know if aperture could get that far or not with exposure compensation. That's like a lot of stops. That's more than three stops. You see what I'm saying? And so when that light happened, I can just go, <gasps> and I went like this, right? Well, what's, what's really interesting about that is I do this so much and I know my camera so much that I did not want to stop shooting, I think, I think, because why did I go to 4.5, right? Oh, God, look at that. I blew that picture, right? 640th at 4.5, but watch what happens next. F8. How, why did I do that? Like, you know, but say, so look, 730.06, 730.05. So less than a second later, Right? So what I did was, I think it was because I didn't want to stop shooting the moment, but I didn't know where my exposure was. I didn't have time to look at the back of the camera, so I'm literally just like frantically spinning dials to see if I can get the exposure where I want it. And my mind just said, it knows better, and it's, it's muscle memory, it said, dude, you've got another dial that is not being occupied by your shutter button, and I, I must have gone like that, and I got the frame, right? And there's the final, right? And I love that photo. Like, that's an amazing picture. And, like, now, the argument would be, had you been shooting raw, you could have brought that back, right? And I know that. I get it. I understand it, you know. But I'm just telling you that there are times, though, that raw won't, won't bring something back like that. You know what I mean? And so, does that make sense? Is that, does that, do you, do you see how quickly I did that and how quickly I worked through that whole situation and how I used, how I shot manual in that way? Did that make sense? Right? How you feeling? Intrigued. That's close enough. That's all I can ask for. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I can ask for. Right? Yeah. And I just wonder. I, don't, I haven't tested it. I haven't, honestly, I haven't done enough aperture priority to know. But, like, I was doing, I was trying aperture priority, and it was just tripping me up, like, tremendously. And I didn't feel that I could get the exposure compensation ext extreme enough for the type of light that I'm looking for. Right? right? Like, that is what I dream of. Like, I dream of light like that. And it's like, but it's so bright. And, wh and where my exposure was for the inside of that place, and I can't believe they walked into that light. I mean, what in the, I mean, can you imagine? Like, look at this. That shadow is kind of weird, but it's actually really nice, you know? And it just right past, it's so fantastic. Anyway, so I don't know, would aperture priority get there? I think it would. I don't, have, I don't feel like I have problems with images like that. Like, if I was at four or five, it instantly would have taken me to a, a 
twenty-five hundredth of a second or something like that, and then if I needed to drop it down a little bit, and which technically I would, an aperture priority. If you didn't exposure compensate, which I would, I would. You you well, you would have to. I would come down like one or two stops. You would have yeah. to because if, if you're an aperture priority and you weren't exposure compensating on the camera manually, it would it balance this exposure and it wouldn't have it it wouldn't have exposed for that. Probably. It would have tried to balance it. It wouldn't have, this would not be the end result. You're right. There yeah. would be a little bit more in the shadows. But and I know RAW can save all that kind of stuff, right. but, you know, I'm kind of a purist. I kind of think that it should be all done in camera, personally. Yeah, yeah. Not to say that RAW hasn't saved me the last couple of months on a couple of photos, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Any questions on that kind of stuff, right? Are we, are we good? I think we're in pretty good shape. Cool. Um, folks almost wanted to, to maybe to go over it again. Yep. Is that okay, just yeah. the spin-in? That's fine. I just want to make sure that we got there with any questions. I appreciate that. We can do that. It's no that's, problem because we have time. I just wanted to make sure that we were on track. So. Let's, let's, let's do that. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, so basically, what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I was talking about is the, you got to understand the thought process, and you kind of actually have to understand and know what kind of the end result of your photo needs to be, right? So... It's all up to you in a way. It's not just what's making a good exposure, but it's also what you're trying to say with your photo, right? So sometimes you might want a motion blurred picture of somebody running or something like that. It gives it energy or something like that, right? And so therefore, you now have to start your exposure in a different place, right? I'm going a little bit differently about this. And so I'm hoping this will kind of drive it home by thinking in a different way, right? So. So you have to think about what the end result of your photo wants to be. So let's just say you want to blur the picture. Then where would you start on trying to, the starting place for your um, exposure? Shutter speed, right? So you know that you need to have it, what, under? 160th. To me, it's like, I get motion all the time. <laughs> I must like always do this and like freak out. I know it's like, oh my God, look what's happening. You know, but no, but um, yeah. So right, you want it under, technically you want it under like 60th of a second, like 30th, mm -hmm. 15th, something like that. So you want to start there. So I would, I would start there and I would put my shutter speed there. Then I would point the camera to get a light meter reading. Like I'm always looking at the light meter, right? So here's how I do it. I, I set what I think I want to start with. Nine times out of 10, it ain't blur, right? So nine times out of 10, it's gonna be, and the aperture is where I start because I know that I just want that depth of field to feel the way it does, right? So, and then I, I point the camera up at the scene and I make the meter happy. Does that make sense? So I put the meter right in the middle, right? And then I take a photo, okay? And um, yeah, I, I chimp like every photo almost, um, right? I don't call it chimping, by the way. You know, you know what, do, do you know why they call it chimping? Because when digital first came out, chimping is when you look at the back of the camera, right? They called it chimping because when digital first came out, people would be like, oh, 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 look, I got it, I got it, you know? And it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't chimp. Um, I, I fine tune, that's what I say. And I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, okay, so, so basically, if I'm, if I'm gonna shoot you guys, I'm, gonna, I'm knowing that 400 ISO, ain't gonna work, right? And so I put it, let's just say, I'm gonna try 16, but that's still not gonna work either. Um, so I set my white balance, I set my ISO, I set my aperture, and I point the camera at you guys, and I make the meter happy, right? And I take a picture. <laughs> You're as bad as the people, seriously, you just like this. <laughs> Unbelievable, I should've done this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there you go. I got a grill moment. You know, it's not bad, right? It's just, I mean, it's not great, but it, you know, whatever. It's, 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 it's a little bit dark, right? So I just, I can never trust these meters, by the way. I don't know if anybody else had any problems with it, but I'm like, I'll make the meter happy, and I'm like, no, that's not right. And so it's probably that white wall in the background that's throwing, that's throwing the meter off, because the meter's always going to meter for the brightest part of the picture, right? right? Mm -hmm. So it's probably that white wall. Um, one way around that is, is, uh, is I could... I could maybe meter, like your, your skin tone really matches the floor. And so I could, actually, like, I could actually point the camera down and get a light meter reading off of that too as well. Always try and look at the same light that's falling on your subject, get a meter reading for that, right? Um, you guys know the hand trick? Where you put your hand in front of the lens, take a meter reading? 
right? Won't work in this situation because <laughs> I got a lot of light on me, right. right? But like for instance, on back backlit situations, like with a window, and you want to expose for their faces, right? If you just point the camera at that, it's going to expose for the window because the window is so bright. The cameras, the meter always wants to make the brightest part darkest or exposed for the brightest part in a picture, right? But you don't. But if you just expose for that window, what's going to happen to the people? Dark. The dark. Silhouette, right? Sometimes good, sometimes not, right? So if you actually, you can actually like, so if I'm standing here, you're there, that window's open, and you're going to cheese for me like you just did, probably, I don't know. Anyway, um, I, would, I would, if minus these lights weren't on me, and I was in the same light as you, I would put my hand in front of my lens like this and fill up, fill up the frame because the light hitting the backside of my hand is about the same light that's hitting the backside of your face, right? One thing I could do if I wasn't on hot lava is I could walk over there and put, get right up in your face, take a meter reading, and then back off, right? And then if I put the camera back up, the meter's going to freak out, right? The meter's going to see that bright window and be like, oh, you're wrong. And I'm going to be like, nah, see, I'm smarter than you. I'm right. But if I don't have time to do that, I can just do this real quick and get a, get a meter reading off the back of my hand, and then I can get really, really close and then fine-tune it. See, does that make sense? So it's basically where the same light is um, falling. Right here, it wouldn't work. Because see how bright my, you know, my hand is, right? Because, I mean, if you can see, if you can see this, the brightness on my hand, you can't really see on the back, but you can see how that light changes dramatically as, as I move around. So it's no different than if you guys were in the same spot, right? Okay, so um, is this, are they chiming in and saying this is making sense, or are they, are they just kind of still waiting for me to get somewhere? Uh, this okay. is solid. Thank okay. you. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> so, uh, well, these guys understood it, and I just wanted to make sure that they were on track. Everybody out there was. Um, but so then, so, so, so once I get all that stuff set, and I, and, I, and I decide what the effect of my photo wants to be, which 99% of the time is going to be shallower depth of field and, you know, no motion blur, right? So I set my ISO as high as I can get it for the situation, and then I set my, uh, my uh, aperture, where I want it, which is usually around 2 to 3.2 f4. Sometimes f4 freaks me out for some reason, so I go to 3.2, which doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Um, whatever makes you happy, right? And then, I, and, then I, and then all I do is I point the camera. Let's try something else. Let's try, let's try this. Okay, so if I wanted to shoot... Jim's got some more light. So if, I'm, if, I, if I point the camera over at Jim and I get an exposure reading and I take a picture, it looks horrible. Right? It's a horrible composition anyway. But that dark wall threw off my exposure. So I would look at the back and I would go like, oh, too light, which means what do I need to do? To the right, right? If I'm Nikon, I go to the left, right? So if I do this... And I shoot the picture. Oh, too dark. Too dark. You're just spinning the button, aren't you? It's better. Yeah. Is that how you do it? You're. I wasn't even looking at anything. I wasn't even looking inside. I was just going. I was just. You do, but you don't. You're not like, oh, I need to go two stops to the right. Nope. You just spin it and. I don't have time to think about that stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. These moments are just flying by. I can't be like, okay. No. So you're just trying to get it close, like get it in the yeah. ballpark, yeah. and then you can touch it up later. Totally. Yeah, right? And I use the back of the screen to fine-tune it. It's there for a reason, in my opinion. You know? That's awesome. I'm not, I'm not ashamed. I'm not a purist where I'm like, I, walk in, I can't walk into a room and be like, this is 400 at F4. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm not that good, right? And so, so basically what I did, I don't know if you guys can show this, but so this sucks, right? And then that really sucks. <laughs> and then it's a little bit better, and a little bit better. And then, and yeah, and then, and then I, got as where, I, I got where I wanted to be. And I wasn't looking at the meter at that stuff. I was just, I was just on the back of the screen. Just boom, 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 boom. Doo, 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 you know, just really fast. Right? Yes? So you're using like a back button focus and the meter we're through gonna, that we're gonna initially? Talk about, we're going to talk about that next. Okay. But Perfect like through segue. the meter through that and then to kind of get you the starting point. From your back button focus, it sets the meter there? No. We'll, we'll get there. That's okay. the next segment. That's a big one. That's All the right. mind blowing. So, you know, Anna's taught you about back button focus. <laughs> <laughs> back button focus is huge. Um, and, so, and, so, and so, you know, we'll get there and talk about that. But yeah, no, actually, though, the, when you're back button focus, 
you have the meter start on the on the front button. You press it down halfway, and the meter starts. Oh, so you're using the shutter button to do the metering. To start metering, yeah. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Is it different than when the meter is triggered from the back button focus? I don't know. I have no idea. Huh. It might be. The thing is, is that I want, so every, everything on this camera needs to have its own purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Two purposes, I guess, for, no? No. This finger is for shooting and for shutter, right? Mm -hmm. This finger is for focus and for aperture. That's it, right? So... Mm -hmm. Right, so we don't ever want to have to hold anything down. We're gonna, I can't get ahead of myself. Back button focus is literally next, and it's okay. gonna be big, and it's gonna take a lot of people understanding it. Does everybody under, know back button focus here? Man, <laughs> I thought I was new to the game. There's, some, uh, there's gotta be some people out there that don't know about it. So anyway, but, uh, but I'm gonna explain how I use it, and that's really important too, you know? So yeah, so, so, so the meter, um, you just try and make the meter happy, and, and then try and get as close as you can, and, then I, and that's the bottom line. Then I use the back of the screen to fine-tune it, right? And so I'm not thinking about numbers. I'm not a math guy. I couldn't even do 24 times 1.6, right? You know, so I'm not, I'm not a math guy. And so I don't want to think about numbers. I, don't, I just want to know that, like, my depth of field, which is my aperture, needs to be where I want it, and then I just need to listen to my shutter. So if, I, if I'm shooting something... And all of a sudden, this happens. Whoa! Okay, that's better. And then I'm gonna have to do that. So see that? So I was too low, and then if I go too high, then I'm like, shoot, now I gotta compensate because I underexposed the scene now, and oftentimes I'll run my aperture that way. So my aperture will go to the left as my shutter speed went up if my shutter is too low. Is that making sense, right? And then I can, if, as long as I can get it, hopefully I can get it all to line up in that sweet spot, and then I can keep after moments. Moments are so hard to shoot and so hard to keep up with that if you're fumbling with those dials and you're thinking about all this stuff, the, flat, the, the bottom line is you're missing it. And if you're changing lenses, you're missing it, right? And I mean, I'm telling you, you're, it's really interesting on this live shoot because I was watching myself, and I'm like, good God, dude, you almost missed that. What's your problem? It's so funny like, to watch like me and like, Brandon's videos and stuff like that, and I'm like, what the hell? Why, why were you over there? You almost missed that moment. But it's interesting how fast it can happen and how quickly you gotta get into position, and you gotta think about how you're doing. You gotta think about the light and the moment and the composition coming together, and you gotta think about the background, and you gotta watch what's happening. You gotta not be in front of everybody's face and messing things up and tripping over things, and oh, yes, now you have to also expose a picture and hit focus and hit the moment in a split second, right? So that stuff has to be just like streamlined like nobody's business. Yeah, cool. So I think we're about, is there, are there any final questions or should, uh, are we uh, are I would we love to come up there and talk about some final questions. Right, How does cool. that sound? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I'm my getting, cup for you. Well, I'm getting set up. Um, can you talk a little bit about metering and, re and recomposing? Is that something that you generally do? Metering and recomposing, or yeah. focus and recomposing. Let's talk about let's talk about focus and recomposing because we had that question as well. That's our next segment. Okay, um, I'm going to dive into it big time. But yes, yes. I mean, what was the question though? Just in case I don't I don't get there. How do you how do you succeed at it? Oh yeah, okay. Because it, it can be tricky. It can be really really tricky. Yeah. and that's what I mean. Quite frankly, when we come back from the break, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into that tremendously. Okay. So I just don't, I mean, I, I hate to always do that with the questions. No, that's But it's, it's amazing how these questions are literally lining up with like everything transits into the next thing. And we love doing that here. Yeah, it, yeah. It's very typical. So yeah. let's talk about why you choose not to spot meter, say, on the face. It's just, it's just a matter of speed and accuracy, okay. I think. Um, again, I'm just telling everybody what works for me. Um, I, you know, and I, there's people that like study this, I'm sure, and they have like, you know, analytical conversations about like, you know, the percentages of how the metering works and I don't know all that kind of stuff. I just need to, I, all I care about is moments and so I just have to get there quickly. And so I find that if I spot meter, there could be a situation that's, that's like really can start throwing me off. If I'm trying to swing for like, uh, but see, the, the, the images I'm looking for are stuff like this, right? Yeah. Or like a big black scene or something like that and down in the corner is like one person like backlit or something, if I try and spot meter, it, it's gonna be really hard for that to find the exact point that I wanna meter off of.
So I basically, I'm essentially metering off the back of the camera. Okay. To be quite honest with you. Perfect. Yeah. So um, Anoop would like to know, which focus mode do you use? Is that next, next, next segment? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna yep. save all focusing for next segment. Yep. Great. Yep. And then, um, you know, let's see. Um, I think we're I think we're in great cool. shape great, here. Great. I just yeah. want to make sure that like you know there's yeah because it was a, it's definitely up. keeping that light is a little tricky. People are of course questioning the JPEG, but now you're doing a nah, little bit. you know you're, I, you're in a little bit more into raw now, and you kind of go back and forth. But I don't know if I, I mean I am I, I yeah. I'm I'm a part of a uh, of 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 a, of a group of guys that Ben Crispin and some other guys you know, and they they just give me crap like daily about it. Yeah. You know, and and I just haven't felt the need yet. Yeah. You know, like, uh, and, and I understand why the people are like you have more range and you can do all this, whatever. You know, <laughs> and I'm just like, I just. The bottom line is, my clients don't give two whatevers if I shoot raw or JPEG. They don't know. Yeah. You know, and so I'm kind of like, if is it worth all the extra? I'm not sure if it's worth all the extra work. Right. Like. Tons of hard drive space. It takes me four hours to download cards now, and you know, I, yeah, I, just, I, no. don't, I don't know if it's worth it or not. I'm, I'm still feeling it out. Yeah, cool. You know? All so, right. So yeah. 